Ellis is catching. Chris Taylor is making his Dodger debut at short with uh, Corey Seager getting the day off. Scott Casbier in search of his sixth win pitching and batting ninth. And our closed captioning this afternoon brought to you by First Five California. Talk, read, sing. It changes everything. So 32 year old left hander Francisco Liriano making his 15th start of the year. It's been a tough year for him. Four and seven and a 5.17 ERA. And the Dodgers trying to get off the carpet and win a game here in Pittsburgh. Liriano and the Pirates have lost each of his last five starts. 0 and 4 he is with a 6.92. He's always been a kind of guy that dances around the strike zone, and I think the Dodgers really need to make him throw strikes. He's got the fastball, the slider, and the changeup, but really he walks more people in baseball than anybody per nine innings. And the ones that are not even close second place is a good half a walk below him so make him throw the ball over the plate. Ten year veteran is the lefty from the Dominican Republic came up with the twins pitch with the White Sox and now beginning his third full season with the Pirates. The Pirates begin the day having won three straight after losing 20 of their previous 26. They hit the road immediately after the game they've got a long road trip ahead beginning in Seattle the Dodgers have nearly well not even an hour's flight to Milwaukee trying to get out of here with at least a win having lost three in a row after winning six straight the Dodgers have had no luck at all in Pittsburgh over the past few years they've lost eight in a row at PNC Park nine of their last ten and dating back to 2014 the Pirates have won ten of eleven and fourteen of their last 17. And you would think in that period of time the Pirates are a much better team than they are right now. They're sitting at 37 and 39 but right now they're getting healthy against the Dodgers and the Dodgers really want to turn that around and McCutcheon has had some big hits Harrison has had some big hits. And we have just continued to watch them swing the bat and throw the ball from the mound we need to turn that equation over. Beginning with Kike Hernandez, Kike at 189, starting in left field today. Howie Kendrick is starting at second base. First pitch from Liriano. He's low and outside, one ball and no strikes. So it'll be Hernandez, Turner, and Thompson. Puig in the cleanup spot. Two balls and no strikes. The young outfield core with Kike Hernandez in left field and Trace Thompson in center, Yasiel Puig in right. They really need to keep themselves disciplined today and get Liriano in the strike zone. Already Kike building that 2 0 count. Has built it 3 0. Liriano has walked 5.6 batters per nine innings this year. There's the first strike of the game. Luriano in 2010, a 14 game winner. In 2013, he won 16. And as Oral mentioned, he was inclined to give up walks, and he did a leadoff walk to Hernandez. I am sure Turner Ward in his hitters meeting today, going over Luriano, mentioned all of the aforementioned things about. Making him throw strikes and you see a guy who normally jumps on a first pitch fastball like Kiki Hernandez up there looking for the ball over the plate and got his walk. Now Justin Turner coming up and Justin continues his hot hitting in his last 13 games he's hitting 375 18 hits and 48 at bats six of those 18 hits have been for home runs and Luriano again having difficulty finding the plate. Each individual hitter has to be disciplined themselves. You can't all of a sudden think he's going to come in the strike zone just because he's been walking people. He has a tendency to, to continue to miss. Again. In 78 innings this year, Luriano has walked 49. He's got to strike out an inning, and he's got. You know, a hit an inning, but you've got to look at that walk column. 
two and one. The last thing you want if you're a pirate is a, a day game after a night game, a quick turnaround because it was a late ESPN game also. And then you have a pitcher on the mound not throwing strikes. And a flight to Seattle after the game. Count is even at two and two. Dodgers head to Milwaukee tomorrow night. Wednesday night and Thursday afternoon then come home and the Dodgers will stay home. Until the all star break. The 2 2. After the game, the Pirates go to Seattle, a nine game, 10 day road trip. Two and two. First out of the game. Well, Justin up there battling and build himself a hitter's count. Liriano got it back to two and two. Justin got the foul ball and just missed that one. One out, one on, and Trace Thompson coming up. Thompson at 238 with 11 home runs and 27 runs batted in. But he has been slumping big time lately. We gone deck. No balls and a strike. So when you've got a pitcher like Luriano who has difficulty finding the plate with any consistency, do you go up there and try to build up a pitch count, make them throw strikes? I think the first pitch has to be right in your sweet spot. You know, a hitter is thinking swing, 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 and then when he sees ball, he disengages. It's not like you go up there taking and it's a relaxed, non competitive, you know, beat that you're taking in the batter's box. No, I'm just taking. You're trying to track the ball, you're trying to attack it if it's in your area, but then if it's not close, you, you disengage. The Dodgers will try to get the pitch count up. Pirate bullpen. Except for their eighth and ninth inning guys, Watson and Melanson. It's been a, an iffy proposition this year. In fact, their bullpen ERA, four and a quarter, 11th in the league. That is a fly ball in the short left center. Actually, left field. And that had trouble written all over it. And a force out at second base. So the Pirates sidesteps in trouble. Now this ball is a towering fly ball that kind of turns into a pop up. And as it's red, both fielders feeling for each other and also losing it in that sky. We've got an overcast sky right now, which is about the same color as the baseball. Kiki Hernandez was off the bag at first and really anticipating the fact that that could be dropped, but just a step too late. So there's two out. And here's Pui. Pirates couldn't catch the ball and the Dodgers couldn't catch a break. Puig has hit well since coming off the DL. Nothing in two. But Puig was held hitless last night. No balls, two strikes, and two out. Just underway. A quick turnaround for the players. They were back at work here at local time. About nine o'clock this morning, and the 0-2 in the short right. That'll do it. So a shaky beginning for Luriano, but he worked his way out. And Casimir getting ready for his 16th start of the year. Scoreless from Pittsburgh.
the degrees on this Monday matinee from Pittsburgh. Now it's time to take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Honda and manager Clint Hurdle. Jordy Mercer's got the longest hitting streak in baseball, 11 games. David Freeze, a big night last night, and Andrew McCutcheon turning things around at the Dodgers' expense. Jung Ho Gung is at third base, and starting Marte is the third leading hitter in the National League. Josh Harrison at second. Sean Rodriguez plays all over the map in right field today. Eric Kratz giving Chris Stewart the day off. Francisco Luriano pitching and batting ninth against Scott Kazmir. Scott Kazmir on the mound. You usually think about establishing your fastball. That's one thing he can do. He can throw it for strikes, but what he needs to do is to prove to the Pittsburgh lineup that he can throw his off-speed pitches for strikes so the fastball will have better effectiveness. Jordy Mercer rolls it foul was an iffy proposition even coming to work this morning in the very first inning last night sliding into second base took an inadvertent knee to the head as Chase Utley was following through and throwing to first Mercer would come out of the game and they didn't know if he'd be ready to go today or not clearly he is and here he is no balls and two strikes Mercer on the years at 277 with four home runs and 26 runs batted in. In his last 20 games, he's hitting 382. So now he's at the top of the foot hurdles batting order. Kazmir is in search of his sixth win. When Kershaw goes, the Dodgers are 14 and 2. All other starters are combined 27 and 34. And so the Kershaw loss last night, giving up those four runs in the second inning, is especially painful. You look at the rotation right now with the Dodgers and you think about a little bit more pressure on this time through the order with the rotation after the Kershaw only gets his second loss. The 2 2. So Urias and someone to be determined for Wednesday and Kenta Maeda will definitely need to pick up some of the slack where Clayton finally faltered a little bit but it wasn't really completely his fault. Rarely do you see him give up four runs in an inning. He'd given up only five runs in a game once all season. And that was his other loss. It was pretty much an outing of welcome him back to the human race. And he'll get back to being himself in his next outing, I'm sure. Casimir gets ahead of the count and then loses Mercer defensively for the Dodgers. You will note this afternoon that Corey Seager has the day off and that fella Chris Taylor is making his Dodger debut. Scouts will tell you a very strong arm smooth hands good range and with his Dodger debut I'm sure he's got a few butterflies out there giving Corey Seager the day off. The young man can handle the position. Came over of course from the Mariners in the deal that sent Zach Lee to Seattle. Now David Freed. Takes high. Freeze at 290, six home runs and 30 runs batted in. It was Freeze with that bases loaded double in the second inning last night that broke the Dodgers' heart and back. And in the left, now Kike Hernandez retreating. They're having some difficulty out there in left field. I don't know if it's the wind or. As he suggests, perhaps the overcast, whatever it is, Pirates had trouble tracking a fly ball in the top half of the end. They're fighting the, the visuals. I think the wind is swirling a little bit because when we called the first ball out there, when the Pirates are on defense, it looked like a fly ball. It ended up being a pop up. The wind kind of knocked it back to the infield, and that one seemed to get a cushion of air and drive Kike back. And yet, as you see in straightaway center, there's not much wind to speak of. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. 0 for 4 last night, robbed of a hit by Turner. But he had the big night on Saturday two home runs and four runs batted in. McCutcheon at 240. Takes high one ball and no strikes. He 
He's as popular a player in this town in any sport as there is. Crosby, Roslisberg, McCutcheon. One and one. And what a sports town it is with the Penguins. The U.S. Open was just here. The Steelers, of course. And with the Pirates on their run, turning their bad seasons into real good ones of late. The Allegheny and the ever present boats along the river. Two and one to McCutcheon, a five time All Star. And in 2013, the most valuable player in the National League. When he hit 317. There's a toss over to first base. Casimir's got a good move. He's got multiple leg kicks. He's got a leg kick where he gives you a full leg kick and delivers it home. He can go from the full leg kick and come to first. He's got the slide step. And he's got a quick move also. Step off move. He's got the full array. McCutcheon in his seventh season. Now it's three and one. Jung Ho Gung is on deck. Dangerous pitch here to a very hot hitter. Early in the game, haven't really found the range on every one of your pitches. Foul back. And it's three and two. Got Casimir won the battle there as far as timing, went with a change up. Wasn't the best altitude on the pitch, but it was good and Taking the sting out of McCutcheon's bat. Just underway, we're in the bottom of the first. And McCutcheon drills one to right, and Quee can't get it. It'll go to the wall. Mercer on his way to third. He'll be held up there by Rick Sofield. So the Pirates are in business, second and third, with one out and Jung Ho Gung coming up. Slightly elevated change up 3 1 to get the count to 3 2, but then a high fastball to McCutcheon does a nice job getting on top of hitting this line drive, and Yasiel plays it perfectly. It's going to be a double if he takes the conservative route and just runs back to the wall. Gives himself a chance to get a catch out of it, and they still hold him to a double and the runner at third. At this point, Dave Roberts elects to play the infield back for Jung Ho Gung. He didn't come up until the first week of May. Of course, he had that horrific knee injury last year. But since that first week of May, he's got 11 home runs and 28 runs batted in. And the Dodgers are against the ropes in the first inning. Third leading hitter in the league, Starling Marte, is on deck. Two balls and no strikes. Again, one of the things the Dodgers are hoping out of Casimir today, and besides the obvious, a good performance. Give them some length, because this bullpen has really been taxed. And there are no days off until the All Star break. Two balls and a strike to Jung Ho Gung. You have to have good first innings to go deep into the game right here. Scott Casimir trying to have some damage control. Two of his outings this year he's gone over six innings six and two thirds and eight and two thirds but everything else has been six or below so I would think the range you're looking for is hoping to get six. Three balls and a strike. This is some of the inconsistencies that Scott has had this year with his control. Making pitches to the correct areas, but they're usually too far in, too far away, or too high. 
thirty three walks in eighty four innings. And if you look at how the walks came about Charlie a lot of them come in bunches you know you have an outing where he walks five or walks six or walks four and then all of a sudden when he has a decent outing it's down to zero or one. Well, that's his second walk. Bases are loaded one out. So AJ Ellis is going to go out and calm Casimir's nerves. Joined by Van Slyke and Turner. If Scott was commanding the baseball I wouldn't have mind that walk at all. I would think it's a veteran pitcher maybe setting up a double play here to try and get out of the inning with a zero. But as much as he struggled this inning with his command, I makes me worry a little bit more with this bases loaded one out situation. And Starling Marte is having a career year. Third leading hitter at 327, seventh in the league with 87 base hits. Pirates have won 37 games this year, 30 of the 37 when they scored first. Infield playing back in hopes of a double play. But Barte's a very fast runner. And that's a dicey proposition. Casimir falls behind again. Twenty one pitches only eight for strikes. That's a big one. It's a nice call by AJ Ellis behind the plate knowing that Casimir has been up with his fastball kind of coming underneath it with his elbow and pushing it. And so he comes back with the breaking ball which he knows Casimir has got to fight to get to the top and to the front of the ball which is going to bring his release point down. Very nice call by the veteran catcher. One and one base is loaded. One and two. Right about now Tommy Lasorda would say to me if I was feeling for the ball like I think Scott is just you got to believe. And when you get into foot strike right here you got to commit to it and accelerate and believe you're going to miss the bat. The bases are loaded with one out. Bottom of the first, still no score. Over the head of Kendrick into right. Runners will just advance a base. In to score is Mercer. And the Pirates take a one to nothing lead. That makes a good pitch he fools him gets him out front he makes a very fortunate swing for the Pirates and the runners have to freeze line drive bases loaded one out you freeze watch to see if the fielder catches it how he misses it they get it in everybody advances 90 feet Marte single to right on Saturday night in exactly the same fashion kind of a drop shot volley. So the Bucks with a one nothing lead the bases remain loaded and Josh Harrison coming up Harrison has enjoyed his daytime work. 286 overall with three home runs, 33 runs batted in. Casimir with a 91 mile an hour fastball. With the ball up, you possibly are going to give up a fly ball, which means you give up a run. The ball down, you might get a ground ball, you might get out of the inning. But Harrison, like Marte, is a very fast runner. The 1 1. One ball, two strikes to Josh Harrison. Born Ray still lives in Cincinnati. Harrison will turn 29 next month in his sixth season, all with the Pirates. Van Slyke. Big out. Yeah. 
And now Sean Rodriguez coming up. But Casimir can get out of this inning giving up only one to moral victory. Well, that pop up restores a little order right here and now keep the momentum by getting in the dugout. Now Sean Rodriguez coming up. He can play all over the lot. First second short was in right field last night. Starting in right field this afternoon. High and outside one ball and no strikes. Rodriguez has played all infield positions. The only position he hasn't played this year is catcher. And center field. And again Casimir falls behind two and oh. Two high fastballs away. He's got walking around going through his toolbox on how to fix it because that's been the pattern for his mistakes. Eye to the arm side. Bases are loaded. McCutcheon, Gung, and Marte. Casimir again needs a new GPS. Thirty one pitches, seventeen balls, only fourteen for strikes. A much needed strike. One way to get a feel on a release point if you're struggling from the windup, even if you want to just go from the stretch, just to simplify the delivery, give yourself a new feel. Rodriguez 257. Now three and two. Nice job getting back into count. No room to spare. Bases loaded, two out, 3 0 count. Go back to back heaters and barely get them in the strike zone at the top. And inside ball four. McCutcheon came sprinting in, and by the time the pitch arrived in Ellis's glove, he was about 15 feet from the plate. It's 2 0. It's one thing for a right hander to watch that runner come down because he's in your peripheral vision. As a righty, you're turning towards the runner on third, but as a lefty, your back's to him. Doesn't distract you on the pitch, but boy, can they get a jump. Three walks, two runs, and Professor Honeycutt is out there to try and calm the nerves of his student. There is nothing Dave Roberts can do. Well, this first pitch right here, Scott's got to try to make a mistake low because when he's going for strikes that are around the knees, he's throwing the ball chest high. So he's got to make a real significant adjustment right here, even if it puts him behind one and oh, just to get a different feel. Looks like Rick Honeycutt suggested to go to the stretch, and that's what he does right there with the first pitch. Well, Kratz, not much of a hitter, it is only hit this year. It was a home run. He's serving as Chris Stewart's understudy while Cervelli is on the DL. See Scott Casimir's delivery from the stretch a lot easier for him to control his center of gravity. So when he takes a step back in the windup, he kind of leans it towards third base and then gathers himself and gets himself going towards home plate. But with the basics of just lifting your leg and your center of gravity stays put, you can get better direction. Nothing in two. Overthrowing that fastball, one and two. The inning began with a walk to Mercer. Kratz is the eighth batter of the inning. The 
You got Gung, Marte, and Rodriguez, third, second, and first. And a base hit into center field for Kratz, but his second hit of the year. It'll knock in two. And the throw will get past Turner, backed up by Casbeer. And it's an ugly first inning for Casbeer in the dock. The struggle for Scott Casimir in the first inning does continue. That's a high changeup. He threw the 0-2 high fastball, more of a setup pitch, just changed the velocity in the eye line. What he really wants to do with that changeup is to keep it down and change speeds, but up in the hitter's eyes, the change of speed doesn't matter. They read it very easily. Well, the last thing in the world the Dodgers want to do is tax their bullpen. Well, the Dodger bullpen is already going to work. First inning. Now, Luriano, he may be the pitcher. He may be batting ninth. He's a 310 hitter. But this should end the inning. Kendrick will throw him out. But an ugly first for Casimir. At least it's over. 4 0 after one. See if they can shake it off against Nelson Luriano. Perhaps they'll get some smooth sailing after a rugged first. It'll be Howie Kendrick, Scott Van Slyke, and A.J. Ellis to bat in the second inning. Luriano can be had certainly this year. This is his 15th start for the four and seven record and a 5.17 ERA. It is not time to abandon the plan on Francisco Liriano. Yes, Scott Kazmir has a rough inning, but if you've got a plan where you can attack him, you, your plan's got to lead to four, five, six runs, so you stick with it. Don't try and get it all back at once. See if he wants to set the table with some walks and then attack him. Kendrick saw a lot of Liriano over in the American League when Howie's with the Angels and Liriano with the Twins. It'll be Kendrick Van Slyke and A.J. Ellis. What Joe Torrey used to say when his teams were down big early. Take small bites. Nothing in two to Kendrick. Tommy Lasorda said it a different way but I can't say it on the air. Imagine that. <laughs> Howie with three home runs, 13 runs batted in. Liriano has surrendered 14 home runs. He misses under the knees. One and two. With Liriano starting today, 
Utley, Peterson, and Seeger, and Gonzalez all setting it out. To short. Mercer. One gone. Chase Utley with the afternoon off. He'll be back in the saddle tomorrow in Milwaukee, and so will we. Urias and Chase Anderson, tomorrow's pitchers. Van Slyke went on the DL four games into the season with that bad back. One ball and one strike. Getting the start at first base today. That's Gung at third. And dug out at first by Freeze. Gung makes a nice play here going to his left and David Freeze they used to hang out at third base an awful lot but now at the other corner gets it in the webbing and keeps the toe on the bag short hop dive very nice play Gung of course he began the year on the disabled list. Two out AJ Ellis stepping in. AJ's at 206. In the on deck circle, about to make his Dodger debut with a bat in his hand is Chris Taylor. Recently arrived and got that old time look, got the, the Sannies and the stirrups. There they are. Are those the real ones or are those the thick stock socks with the painted on stirrups? If you're going to do it, you just get the Sannies and, and the real stirrups. Two and two. In days of yore, that's just the way it was done. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's like the real deal. Okay. Been a busy inning for the infield. And the second assist from Jordy Mercer. It's four nothing Pirates as we go to the second.
Scott Casimir already down four nothing as he takes the hill for the second inning of work. You already heard Charlie and Oral talk about the fact a couple of guys getting the day off. Corey Seager just needed a day. Adrian Gonzalez was already out yesterday. Dave Roberts was originally going to put him in the game today and said Adrian Gonzalez actually went up to Dave Roberts and said you know what I think it might be best in the interest of the team if I actually got two straight days off he said I'm overthinking things at the plate things are not going well as far as the hitting is concerned and he said I think it's better to just have a couple of days off and Dave Roberts said of course Adrian Gonzalez never wants to come out of the lineup so if he asks for it you give it to him. Adrian is hitting under 200 in the month of June and he's a career 290 hitter so he's sitting it out another day Jordy Mercer who walked and scored in his first plate appearance. Pirates batted around in the first. Foley hit to third, and Turner throws him out. You mentioned earlier, Oral, about Scott Casimir and his difficulties in the first inning. With the four runs he gave up in the first inning today, his ERA in the first inning this season is nine. That's something you got to start analyzing. You got to, is it about I come out and I try to feel my way through it instead of attack? That I'm not finishing off my time in the bullpen warming up for the game where I'm trying to maybe conserve some energy for later in the game when I really should be spending it. David freeze fouls it off to the right nothing in one. I've gone through both theories of you know the team needs me to go deep so I've got to kind of ease into this and you find out you give up that four spot you give up take a lot of pitches to get through an inning and you miss out on your goal real early. And then you then I went the other theory of I'm going to pitch this inning like it's the ninth even though it's the first I'm going to pitch it like it's the ninth and if you breeze through it because you're really attacking and you're just spending all your bullets sometimes it just gets you into the outing and then you do go deep. Freeze who flied to left in his first at bat and had the bases loaded double last night falls behind one and two. And in the case of Scott Casbier this afternoon. 40 pitches in the first inning and three walks. Related to kind of the different theories there are for long distance runners. The guys that like to break out early and then get into their stride in the middle of the race and then maybe save enough or don't save anything until the end. Just see how far and how fast they can go or the other guys that pace themselves go with the pack and then save it for the sprint at the end. And from the mixed metaphor department in 1982 heavyweight championship of the world Larry Holmes and Jerry Cooney Cooney would knock everybody out. He never lasted past three or four rounds. He pulverized everybody in the ninth round of that fight. He had Holmes against the ropes. He had never gone that far into the fight and he had a chance to finish off Holmes did not Holmes would come back and win the fight. But looking back on that ninth round, Cooney coulda, woulda, shoulda, and couldn't pull the trigger. That's the first strike out of the game for Kazmir, and there's two out. Wanted to conserve his energy to go the full 15 back in the days when there were 15 round fights. McCutcheon grounds out and that ends the inning. One, two, three. We will go to the third with the Pirates up for nothing.
How you think of America's favorite pastimes, Dodger baseball and fireworks. Celebrate this year at Dodger Stadium when the Orioles are in town. Enjoy a post-game fireworks show courtesy of Hawaiian Springs Water. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotion. Well, here's Chris Taylor making his Dodger debut, and he swings and misses. It's nothing in one. Taylor out of Virginia Beach. Dodgers picked him up eight days ago. Balls behind quickly, nothing in two. He's six one, about 200 pounds. A career 240 batting average in 86 games played with the Mariners. Into center field. McCutcheon's got a long way to go, and he can't get it. Taylor is on his way to second. Taylor is on his way to third. And welcome to the Dodgers. As Chris Taylor, in his first at bat, triples over the head of Andrew McCutcheon. I'll give you a spark for the whole team. Easy way to get to know your teammates and your third base coach. Chris Woodward over there to give him a special hello. Nice swing right there going down to get that ball. And just driving at the center field. Welcome aboard Chris Taylor. Landing gear down. Scott Casmir stepping in. Casmir is a good bunter. Boy with the Dodgers love to play this run. Again going back to what uh, Torrey used to tell his team. And Los Angeles, New York, and Atlanta, St. Louis take small bites when you're down big. Hernandez on deck and Turner to follow. And Liriano falls behind 2 0. Taken all the way 2 0. Pitcher against pitcher trying to build an inning when you're down by four. You're trying to make some contact, trying to figure out a way to get to that outfield grass. 2 and 2. Casimir is 3 for 24 so far this season. Three for 25. Mariano needed the strike out and he got it. Well, the challenge for Liriano gets a little bigger right now. Kike Hernandez coming up. Got the walk in his first at bat. Kike's had some situations with men on third this year and less than two outs where he's kind of overswung right here. I think he needs to stay within himself, get a strike, and drive it. Way high. Eric Kratz loses his face mask and tracking down that wild pitch, or nearly wild pitch at any rate. So he's going to go out and have a chat with Liriano. Down, looking for a ball down, staying down. But he's got the glove down that low. The knees are bent and ready to jump, and that's what he needed to do. That's Chris Taylor leading off third, the newest Dodger. And Liriano falls behind 2 0. Oh. Dodgers no runs and a hit. And that hit, Chris Kelly. Or Chris uh, Taylor. 2 and 1. Hernandez walked in his first at bat at 189, five home runs and 12 runs batted in. Now it's two and two. He 
think he's got to get a positive image in his head right now not hitting at the average he wants to hit at has not done the job in this situation as consistently as he would like to get a good image in your head get a pitch you can hit up in a hanging curve would cure Chris Woodward got a chance to see his uh, former general manager Jack Zarensic. Former GM of the Seattle Mariners. Jack has come home and he's now doing the pre and post game show on the radio for the Pirates on KDKA. Here's uh, 2 2. Inside and low 3 and 2. They don't have to expand the strike zone right here. Get a strike or take the walk. You get the hottest hitter on the Dodgers on deck. Even if you're setting up a double play situation, you want to get Justin to the plate. On three and two. Well, that's what they're going to do. It's a good job by Kike. Here comes Justin Turner. And a look at the Coors Light cold hard facts for this Monday matinee. Justin Turner has had quite a month of June. Will Myers of the Padres. Jay Bruce, his name has been bandied about lately. Lamb of the D backs Adam Duvall having a great year and then there's Justin Turner Turner in his first 39 games this season hit just 233 in his last 34 he's at 269 with 10 home runs 28 runs batted in so he's got a chance to get the Dodgers right back into this thing struck out in his first at bat nothing in one. Right off Justin's big toe or someplace on the foot. That does not feel good at all. You have to shake it off long enough so he can concentrate on driving in these runs. So you see, he gets it right off the inside of his left big toe. Your mind is saying it doesn't hurt, and the toe respectfully disagrees. This is where you have to be really selfish and not right when okay that's good enough to hit you want to make sure it is exactly the way you want it to feel before you get in there this is a big situation down 4 0 could be a week from Tuesday <laughs> Taylor's at third and Kike Hernandez at first look at it. nothing in two to Justin Turner with Trace Thompson on deck. Liriano, like Clayton Kershaw, likes to go to the down and in slider to punch right handed hitters out. Change up is usually erratic. Oh! That'll get your attention. Justin hit his foot by himself and Liriano almost takes his noggin off right there right by his left shoulder as he turns it in. Even though that's about eight ten inches away from your head or your eyes it feels like it's coming right at you. One and two to Turner first and third one out in the third. Two balls and two strikes. Turner, beside all the RBIs in June, has eight home runs this month, and that ties him with Adam Duvall for second in the National League. Will Myers having an unbelievable month of June, has knocked in 10, and with the All Star game down in San Diego, you've got to figure Will Myers will be there. Not bad having a home game <laughs> as your all star game. In the left, Marte. Curious route, but he makes the catch. In to score is Taylor. The first run of the game for the Dodgers. It's four to one. Really nice professional bat from Justin Turner. But following the ball off his foot, getting one at his noggin, falling behind with a runner on third and less than two outs. Lays off a couple of high fastballs and 
Stays on that down and in slider. Gets underneath it, gets the fly ball, and almost really hit a gapper. So Chris Taylor introducing himself. And Turner with his 38th run batted into the season, and yet another in June. Now Trace Thompson's 4-1. Thompson, he struggled. He's hitless in his last 16. To right and slicing into the stands. The nice thing about Trace Thompson, even though he's in this slump, that he is trusting the process, working really hard in the cages with the hitting coaches. Continuing to rebuild his swing and to shorten his swing. And he has gotten some production from that, and given him confidence that he's on the right track. Thompson blooped one to left in his first at bat. It dropped between Marte and Mercer. But Kike Hernandez is unsure as to whether or not it was going to be caught by either would be uh, forced out at second base. No fault of Hernandez. The 1-1. One, one. one ball and two strikes to Trace Thompson. Gassio Puig is on deck. Luriano at 52 pitches. So the Dodgers hoping to wear him down so. Two balls two strikes. Coral was saying earlier control has been Luriano's. Blemish in his career. He's walked 51 batters. In 80 innings this season. Kershaw walked two last night, one of them intentionally. That's news. Yeah, he's got nine. He and Liriano get the most, right near the top, but the most swings on balls. Liriano gets it because he throws so many balls. Clayton gets it because his stuff is so good and he throws so many strikes. In the um, field. The wind is really unreflective of what the flags are suggesting out there today. So Thompson pops out. The Dodgers score a run and leave one. After two and a half, 4 1 Pirates.
Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. Tommy Lasorda and Lee Wire engage in some geopolitical talk. Meanwhile, out on the mound, the groundskeepers are going to attend to the pitching rubber so that it is to the liking of Scott Casimir. Day game after a night game, a little hard to get the water clay mixture right sometimes. Having to retamp that down and get it firm. It doesn't break apart as the pitchers get into it. If it gets too dry, it'll start chipping away and ruin their footing. So they take the clay and moisten it a little bit. Well, the first thing that happens after a stadium empties and a game is over, the groundkeepers go out and, uh, as you say, they tamp it down not only around the pitcher's mound, but home plate. If you're doing a lengthy post game show, you'll hear those thuds off in the distance. And while the uh, groundskeepers do their business, we'll do ours. Celebrate the 1981 Dodger World Series Tri MVPs on Saturday, July 2nd, as the Dodgers take on the Rockies. The first 40,000 fans in attendance will receive a 1981 Tri MVP bobblehead. Presented by Security Benefit. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Well, we just received some sad news that we'll pass along to you, an old friend of yours and ours. Tom Kelly, for years, the lead radio and TV announcer at USC, more than four decades passed away today at the age of 88. A member of the USC Hall of Fame, Southern California Sports Broadcasters Hall of Fame. A wonderful broadcaster, a good man, who uh, coincidentally went to my alma mater, Bradley, which also uh, produced Chick Hearn and Ralph Lawler. So we lose a friend today, Tom Kelly, who was 88. We go to the bottom half of the third. A rugged first inning, a more efficient second inning for Kazmir as Jung Ho Gung will lead it off in the bottom of the third. Takes a strike, nothing in one. Nothing in two to Gung. And he's done on three pitches. So Casmir found whatever it was he couldn't find in the first inning. Three off speed pitches right here. This last one, searching for the edge of the plate, just wanders off the edge. Gung gives it a shot and can't reach it. Got Casmir finding some rhythm and throwing some strikes. Marte takes a strike. So a four run first inning has put the Dodgers behind the eight ball. They come back with a run in the top of the third is imperative that Casimir keep them off the board here in the bottom of the third. One and two. His last three outings, he's had three no decisions. Left the game two two, three three, and down zero two in his last one. He got the Dodgers came back in the down zero two game. Now well, he has struck out two in a row, and that's three in the game for Casimir. It'll bring up Josh Harrison. Well, change ups to Gung, and now the high cheese. We get Marte. 
vary your sequence, vary your speeds, vary your locations. And if you can throw most of them for strikes, the hitters have to swing. Well, they altered the, the hole in front of the pitching slab, and Casimir has agreed with it. And Slyke at first. Harrison is done. And another 1 2 3 inning for Casimir, who has now retired seven in a row. Roberto Clemente Museum. On Saturday night, the museum was kind enough to stay open late and offer a private tour to the Dodgers. Any players and personnel of the Dodgers that wanted to go visit, of course, there is the infamous bat, 39 ounces, 36 inches. So many amazing different things to see at the Roberto Clemente Museum. And then why not bring the bat to the park? Yasiel Puig with a replica bat, again, 39 ounces, 36 inches, using that in batting practice, of course, trying to feel the weight and the length of the bat. A tremendous opportunity if you're ever here. I highly recommend the Roberto Clemente Museum, of course, absolutely beloved in this city, guys. One of the all-time sports legends in this town. Roberto Clemente. Quaid leads it off. He is so revered that the right field wall is 21 feet in the air. Number 21 was his jersey. The Clemente Bridge is the thing that you can't help but see from our perch here at PNC Park. And of course, you had uh, Honus Wagner, Ralph Kiner. Willie Stargell. But as Bob Prince used to say, Bobby Clemente was the quintessential baseball player in this town. And there's the bridge in his name. 39 ounce bat. And with it, 3,000 big league hits. Two and one to Puy. Slowly hit to third. This is going to be a tough play. Puy is out by a half a step. Gung Ho Gung with a terrific play. And Puy in disbelief. Charge is very hard. A nice exchange and bang bang at first. Looks like it got him by a half a step. Players now just kind of stand transfixed, hoping that somebody sees something on the tape that gives them a hit. They're running down the first baseline. The ball hasn't arrived. They start smelling a hit. And when it's that close, they're smelling it for a replay. No balls and two strikes to Howie Kendrick, who bounced the short in his first at bat. Starting at second base today with Utley having the afternoon off. This one's to short. And Mercer 
a much easier play to gone. So far the Dodgers just one hit the newcomer Chris Taylor a triple he would come in to score on a Turner sack fly in the third. Now the winds beginning to pick up from right field toward left. As is the earlier breeze was making life miserable on some of the defenders Van Slyke takes low. I think up above the stadium roof there is definitely some breeze and some of those balls that we've seen the fielders have trouble with have been very high so I think at the apex they've been getting blown around and then they get another wind effect when they drop down below the level of the stadium. You see the wind a whipping. And Van Slyke with a base hit as he punctures the shift. Well, the Dodgers their second hit of the day. And that brings up A.J. Ellis. Van Slyke starting this afternoon at first base with the slumping Adrian Gonzalez setting it out again. Ellis who bounced a short in his first at bat at 204. Dodgers expect to be up in Milwaukee around the dinner hour. Milwaukee Central time and Pittsburgh of course a East Coast time. And then three games Tuesday and Wednesday nights and Thursday afternoon. We know for sure Urias goes tomorrow. After that, anybody's guess on Wednesday. Thursday, Maida. Ellis big rip fouls it back it's two and two. Well A.J. will sleep in his own bed tonight. Rips outside Milwaukee. So he'll have three quasi home games. Two balls two strikes two out. Three and two. Luriano's now at 70 pitches. And after Casimir's 40 pitch first inning, he's only at 58. To right field, slicing foul and out of play. They're playing AJ around the right center. He can. Get one in the left center gap. Score a run here with a 3 2 count, two out. Three and two. There goes Van Slyke. The pitch is high and away. Brings up Chris Taylor. And in his very first at bat with the Dodgers, a triple over the head of Andrew McCutcheon, worthy of a Carl's Cam replay. Middle infielder that can really fly, and he showed some power right there. Some lightning in his hands. That's the third walk given up by Liriano, and if Taylor can triple again. The Dodgers are right back in this thing. Even though that was a strike, Kratz apparently crossed up from Liriano. It looks like some kind of miscommunication. We want to make sure they're on the same page. Two on, two out in the fourth. And the Bucks lead by three. It hasn't been an easy journey for Liriano. In the right center field, 
And coming on is Rodriguez to make the catch. And that will end the inning. No runs, a hit, a walk, and two left after three and a half. Four ones, Pirates. Four one Pirates. Two hours after every game here at PNC, they close down Clemente Bridge. Now it's time for the greater coverage of baseball, brought to you by T-Mobile. And about the aforementioned bridge, built in 1928. And again, it, what it does here in Pittsburgh, it provides a, a wonderful community atmosphere, and so fans can actually walk to the ballpark. And it was first lit up at night, in 2002 it's a uh, this city has gone through such a renaissance it has uh, turned around in every way and a lot of it has to do with the new ballpark here PNC and of course the Steelers the Pittsburgh Symphony is now considered one of the great symphonies in the world the downtown area lots of new restaurants and young people are moving in and for years there had been the flock leaving town. You've got Market Square, a nice little place downtown where our hotel is near, and the strip area. They've linked all the areas very well. Some great city planning. Sean Rodriguez on two and one. Now two and two. 15, 20 years ago, Pittsburgh was a punchline. Not anymore. There's a great thriving city come backer easy play for Casimir that's the first out of the fourth so what is he doing in the last three innings that he couldn't do in the first he's made an adjustment especially from the windup from the stretch he wasn't too bad but from the windup he was setting the table with a lot of balls and showing him that he couldn't throw any off speed pitches for strikes the changeup now is more down the fastball he's getting ahead He's found it and he hopes and the Dodgers hope it's in the nick of time that he can stay with it. Rick Honeycutt at the helm watching him. I'm sure was at the core of fixing Scott. Eric Kratz singled in two with his second hit of the year. In his first at bat. So he's got two hits and three RBIs and a home run. Minor League Baseball you can lose your release point for a batter or two or three and have enough ability to get out of it. The big leagues you do that and there's just another quality hitter coming back up there that if you're going to make mistakes to or fall behind it make you pay up here. There have been starters I recall in the past that had difficulties in the first inning who would start warming up earlier. You go through a lot of different 
variations to how to fix those first inning woes. Especially when the pattern creeps up on you. Starting later starting earlier having it be more intense. Simulating the first inning in the bullpen so when you come out it feels like the second. Oh and two. One ball two strikes. Casimir with the four runs surrendered in the first inning this year his first inning earn run average is nine. Sometimes I would have a hitter on my own team come down. For the very end of my warm ups so that visual of having a hitter stand in and getting close to the plate and then hey switch around to the left side stay away from the plate now stand really close to the plate just ch changing it up enough to give me exactly what I'm going to see. When I get out there you know you warm up with just your bullpen catcher and your pitching coach over your shoulder in a very comfortable environment in the bullpen pacing yourself and all of a sudden you're in the midst of competition and that can shock you away from your rhythm. When you say what's the big deal you know they're professionals they've been doing it their whole life they. Are getting paid a king's ransom but it, you're still a human being and you're still looking to do something that's. Very coordinated very precise and, and an athletic movement against somebody who's very good and very coordinated with a bat in his hand. Two and two. And sometimes it's just because. Yep. It is not easy. To make it look easy and especially number 22 on our team makes it look easy so many times. In the center, there's Trace Thompson. Second out of the fourth, and Liriano coming up. Liriano bounced to second in his first at bat. Casimir's now set down nine in a row. Last out in the first after that battle with 40 pitches, and then three in the second, three in the third, and two here in the fourth. Luriano, just because he's a pitcher, is no easy out, not by any stretch. And a fly ball to right. Well, he is this time. One, two, three, ten straight retired by Kazmir. Dodgers remain in it. We go to the fifth, 4 1 Pirates. of the fifth inning Scott Casimir Kike Hernandez and Justin Turner do up in this inning I want to take you back to Kike Hernandez in Arizona for a moment when he came into the clubhouse we're so used to seeing him in those flowing locks and he shaved his head he said he joked that it was the Trace Thompson effect of course when Trace Thompson had his head shaved by Scott Van Slyke he started to turn things around offensively but Kike also has a very good reason why he shaved his head his father Enrique is undergoing cancer treatment and he wanted to show a sign of support for his 
dad, his dad, and his mom are here today at PNC Park enjoying the day and enjoying being able to watch their son play. Of course, they live in Puerto Rico, so don't get to see a lot of Kike's baseball games, but Kike wanted him to know that he was thinking about it. And of course, that big home run on Father's Day for his dad, guys. Casimir to lead it off in the fifth, and then Enrique's son, Kike. It'll be Casimir, Enrique, Kike Hernandez, and Justin Turner. Four runs, three hits for the Pirates. All of them came in the first. The Dodgers, one run and two base hits. Casimir struck out in his first at bat. Seventy five pitches in for Luriano. Casbeer has struggled in the first inning giving up 40 has now thrown less pitches through the first four innings than Luriano has. So maybe the Dodgers can wear him out. One and two. And you talked about Joe Torrey's theory about small bites but you have to take them more often than once. So they need to set some tables and drive them in. Casimir struck out for the second time today. That's three strikeouts for Luriano and the first out of the fifth. Father's Day. Kike Hernandez knocked one out. With Alana's really nice report about Enrique Hernandez, Kike's father, and that was a special home run. She interviewed Kike after the game and it was a very sentimental home run that you could tell that Kike who has such a great sense of humor and usually is on all the time really got into his heart when he was speaking about his dad and what his dad's going through and how much his dad has meant to him. Enrique's son has walked twice today. Oh. Well, Kike took the jersey from that game on Father's Day as well as the uh, the scorecard and a couple of other items from the Father's Day get up and had it put into a shadow box. Mitch Poole, the clubhouse manager here, had it put into a beautiful shadow box to commemorate the day and had it brought here to Pittsburgh to be able to give to his dad to take it back to Puerto Rico. So Kike is starting today in left field. Dodgers down by three with one out. In the fifth. Works the count full. This is a 16th game this season in which Hernandez has let off. And walks for the third time. One out, one on, and Turner coming up. Loriano gives up four walks, three to Hernandez, Justin Turner coming up. Turner struck out, and a sacrifice fly in the third inning. Knocked in to this point, the Dodgers only run. Dodgers looking to put an end to this three game losing streak after having won six in a row. And just a staggering note. Dodgers have not been swept in a four game series by the Pirates. Since World War II, 1944. Back in the days of yore, there were a lot of four game series because there were a lot of Sunday doubleheaders. And most of those years, the Pirates weren't very good. And now that the Dodgers and Pirates, and the Dodgers and everybody outside the Western Division face each other once a year, home and road, there aren't that many four game series. Having said all that, It's 72 years. So the Dodgers would like to have a win for many reasons today. Trailing the Giants by eight. 
But you know to get back into this game yesterday Justin Turner helped him climb into the back into the game to make the game four to two with a two run blast. Clayton had given up the four spot but Justin came back and gave him an opportunity to snatch this one from defeat but the comeback fell short. With him at the plate Charlie you you, you think come back right now with his hot bat. First 39 games this year he hit 233 in the last 34 269 with 10 home runs. And he lines up base hit into the right field corner. Hernandez will be held at third and Turner arrives at second base with a double. He continues his hot hitting. That's his 13th two base hit of the year. And the Dodgers have second and third one out and Trace Thompson coming up. Kind of fists it down the right field line and nice little spin on it. Keeps it fair. Right there Justin Turner showing that he can use all the tools he can get the head out and pull it over the left field wall or if you're going to try and jam him he can get the hands pulled in and take it down the right field line. Last night a walk a home run and a double for Turner knocked in three and today's one for two in that double. Ray Searage coming out. Pirate pitching coach and the pirate bullpen stern around. Jared Hughes. Liriano at 87 pitches. Hughes getting up here, and Sarah's not only talking to Liriano about pitching and trying to get Trace out, but also delaying as long as possible to get Hughes ready. Ray Searage, a Long Islander. Played with the Mets and the Brewers and the White Sox with the Dodgers for a couple of years. Well, the Dodgers with Thompson at the plate is the tying run. Taking inside and low one ball no strikes. Luriano coming into the game 49 walks in 78 innings. He's got four walks in four and a third today. Thompson slices it foul. This is the at bat will really energize the Dodger bench. Trace can get a. A run in here or even two. One ball, two strikes to Trace Thompson, who is hitless in his last 17 at bats. He's due. Yasiel Puig on deck. With Hernandez at third and Turner at second. One out. Two balls and two strikes. Changeup's been erratic. He might take a shot with a 2 2 count with it, but we've seen him really go up the ladder with fastballs or try the down and in slider to most right handed hitters. Fastball up. That's a ball right out of his hand. That's not a competitive pitch right there. Trace just spitting on it. Pitching coach can only say so much. Right about now, if you're a Dodger, you're hoping it was a bad visit. That means it was unsuccessful, and Trace wins this battle. Bad visit. Base is loaded. So now here's Puig. Golden opportunity for the Dodgers to get right back into this game. Puig is flied to right and bounced to third. Hernandez, Turner, and Thompson. They're on the bases with one out. 
top of the fifth. Blocked by Kratz. One ball, no strikes. I imagine the leash around Luriano's neck is getting tighter. Now, CL usually challenges and attacks that first pitch. Good discipline right there with that ball in the dirt. Week six home runs, 21 runs batted in. Into right center field. That's going to be a base hit. Backhanded by Rodriguez. Hernandez comes in to score, and so does Turner. And so it's a 4 3 game as Puig singles to right center. Kike Hernandez easily scores. Justin Turner gave this ball a look to make sure it wasn't going to be caught, but Trace Thompson with a completely different angle is right on him as far as Chris Woodward having a clog third base, so Justin had to go, and Trace Thompson makes it all the way over to third. So the Dodgers have runners at the corners, a two RBI single for Puig. The Dodgers have moved to within one, and Luriano is moving toward the dugout. Ball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Carl's Jr. The California classic double cheeseburger for just $2.49 at Carl's Jr. Bill Mazeroski with one of the most famous walk-off home runs in history. Off Ralph Terry, Game 7, 1960 World Series. Yogi Berra playing in left over the wall. It went at Forbes Field. And this is Jared Hughes making his 27th appearance of the year. Born in Connecticut, grew up in Orange County. Howie Kendrick with runners at the corners, a 4 3 Pirate lead. And Kendrick bounces up, bangs a base hit into right. In to score is Thompson, and that ties the score at four. Puig holds it second. Charlie said small bites. They decided to stay at the table and eat this inning. Tie this game up, and now we got a fresh start. Racing Scott Casimir's rough first inning. Howie Kendrick going this way again. Yasiel Puig with a base hit to right center. Howie Kendrick with a line drive right there. Justin Turner used that right field side. All the right-handed hitters staying on the ball. Now Van Slyke stepping in. And as this game wears on, let us not forget that the Dodgers have four pretty good left-handed hitters on the bench. Utley, Peterson, Adrian Gonzalez, Grandal, the switch hitter, and Corey Seager. Van Slyke today has a hit and has been robbed of one. 
So Puig the lead runner at second base and Kendrick is at first. One pitch to Kendrick and Dodgers have scored three here in the fifth inning. Way outside. One ball, one strike to Van Slyke. So Liriano walks two batters in the fifth, and they both come around to score. Alcabetes Caminero warming in the Pirate bullpen. And Hughes is struggling. Pirates scored four runs and three hits in the first inning. Haven't had a base runner since. The Dodgers with a run in the third and three here in the fifth inning have tied the score. Josh Harrison coming in from Puig's blind side. One out, three in in the fifth. And Puig is the lead run. Two and two. Let's go. And the throw gets past. Harrison and Puig will go to third. Heads up play by Asiel Puig and even a more heads up play by Howie Kendrick not running into an out with Puig getting into third and less than two outs. This ball getting away from second base. Howie Kendrick got a read on how far it gets away from second base and with that angle seeing where the ball stops and Harrison going for it doesn't want to make the second out at second base with Puig already at third. A.J. Ellis was thrown out at second base on a similar play on Saturday night. Kratz thrown all the way down from his knees. So the Dodgers get a break and 90 feet of real estate. Van Slyke will get another crack at it. When they give you a break like that and you've got three runs to tie this game you really want to capitalize right here if you're Scott Van Slyke. It's kind of kick them while they're down. Van Slyke one for two one out runners at the corners. Kendrick back standing up easily. Hughes has had control issues to this year nine strikeouts and 12 walks in 21 innings. Here's a 2 2. There goes Kendrick without a throw. And it's 3 and 2. George Lombard and Howie Kendrick got a nice read where he was off and running and there was no chance they were going to get him between the watch and the the body movement you see the whistling and still coaching going on even though he's at second. So a base hit could conceivably score two here. A.J. Ellis on deck. Second and third with one out. But Van Slyke is down on strikes. That's a big one. Yeah, that one stings. Good. I hope AJ Ellis can pick you up if you're Scott Van Slyke. A little different crooked number, a three on the board compared to a four or a five. Well, just breaking the tie after being down four nothing. Ellis has bounced to short and walked. Puig and Kendrick at third and second. One ball, no strikes. Kratz picked that pitch like a first baseman. The way these modern catcher's gloves are made, they're so flexible and the hinge 
They can put the padding in there to protect the catcher's hands, but leave it flexible enough so they can make a catch like that. Ellis in the hole. Not going to be an easy play. Not going to be a play at all. In to score is Puig. Ellis drives him home, and the Dodgers with four in the fifth take a 5 4 lead. Dodger bench is razzing wheels right there. AJ Ellis, not the fleet of foot, but this ball gets in the hole, and even after it's clanked, people are pulling for him. And I'm sure even Clayton Kershaw, Justin Turner, Yasiel Puig are trying to be a jockey for AJ Ellis to get him down to first base in time to beat this out. Turn it into a base hit for himself, or maybe an error, but definitely a run scored. He is flying. Well, the Dodgers here with four in the fifth. Their first lead of the day. And this is a slow chopper to third. Gung will throw out Kike Hernandez. Well, the Dodgers come up with four. Justin Turner, a double. Fleet, a single. And Kendrick, a single. Five, four Dodgers. Forty pitches. Scott Casimir Oral has since retired the last ten batters in a row. The release point's gotten better on the fastball, but with that, the changeup release point is now in the right place also. So the fastball down by the knees that sets up the off-speed pitch that's down there now with good action. That's got Scott Casimir back on the beam, and the Dodgers now got him a lead. So he hung in, and now it's a matter of hanging on to the lead. Jordy Mercer has walked scored a run and bounced to third and riding an 11 game hitting streak and the Pirates weren't sure if he was going to start today or not. Yep. He and uh, Chase Utley's knee collided at second base last night as Utley on a double play toss his follow through the knee caught. Mercer in, in the helmet. Mercer would have to come out of the game. So they weren't sure how he'd be feeling this morning. Apparently just fine. And he's been hot. 11 games in a row in which he's had a hit. But he flies to left in the first out of the fifth inning. When you think of 4th of July, you think of America's favorite pastimes, Dodger baseball and fireworks. Celebrate this year at the Dodger game with the Orioles in town. And 
enjoy a post game fireworks show courtesy of Hawaiian Springs water for tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. 11 straight retired by Casimir David Freeze. No balls on a strike. David Freeze hurt Clayton Kershaw yesterday with the double in the gap. And that was the the blow that normally we don't see with Clayton. We see him give up the scratch runs when he's not comfortable on the mound, but rarely do somebody then capitalize on a little bit of his erraticness. Is that a word, erraticness? It is now. Okay, good. But David Freeze with a fastball that Clayton was trying to come in on, left it in the middle of the plate and hit that double. Knocked in three. Puig is going back and making the catch. Same type of ball right there, except Freeze hit the gap yesterday. That one, Yasiel was able to gather in. Twelve in a row retired by Casper. Forty pitches, only 21 strikes in the first inning. He walked three batters. And since then, he's barely been tested. One ball, no strikes to Andrew McCutcheon. He's doubled and scored a run. Well, not only has Casimir kept the Dodgers in the game, and a run in the third and four in the fifth. He's kept the bullpen on the seat of their pants, which is exactly where they want to be today. Because you know who's ever going to pitch on Wednesday. His initials are TBD. You think whoever that's going to be, whether it's Brock Stewart, Carlos Frias, whoever they're going to have pitch, they certainly can't have a, a Johnny Holstaff kind of a game because these guys have been pitching every day it'd be really hard to have a bullpen day where you just let everybody go one or two innings and with eight guys in the bullpen and no starter you figure you can get through the game but where would they all be after that game was over and especially if they went into that game slightly fatigued and the next day off for the Dodgers is the all star break. Three balls, two strikes. Drilled to left. And it's going to drop in for a hit. A two out single to left for Andrew McCutcheon. And the first out since, or the first hit since Kratz's base hit in the first inning. Andrew McCutcheon is probably not going to make the all star team this year. He's made it five times. But I'll tell you what, he might look back on this Dodger series and he has his normal MVP type second half. He might look back and say, this is the series that I got going in 2016. McCutcheon has a hit in 10 of his last 11 games against the Dodgers. He's got two of them today. And had the two home runs on Saturday night. Jung Ho Gung has walked, scored a run, and has been struck out. Scott Kazmir at 86 pitches, gave up the four spot in the first, but the team's back on top, five to four, and this is his shutdown inning, and he's got to go through the heart of the order with two out. The McCutcheon base hit seems harmless. With Gung up there, though, he's working everything that he has. He doesn't care if he spends it all right now and only goes five innings. The most important thing is to put a zero up after that comeback. Gung, who didn't play his first game of the season until the first week of May, has 11 home runs. Two and oh. Two and one. So Casimir, 88 pitches. Gung is 29, lives in Seoul, South Korea. And 
takes inside three balls and a strike. In the Korean League, a career 298 hitter. Average about 15 home runs a year over there. Here's a 3 1. Three balls and two strikes. Pulled the string on him right there. Dung thinking, I'll get our team back on top. Sitting on a 3 1 fastball. Scott Kazmir, that outstanding changeup that has turned this outing around. Gets him way out front of that one. Three and two, and so McCutcheon will get the head start. And Gung will get another shot at him. In his final year in Korea, playing for Nexon, Gung hit 356 with 40 home runs and 117 runs batted in. On base percentage, 459. That'll get it done. Mm -hmm. Played for Team Korea in the World Baseball Classic in 2013. On three and two, breaking ball, ball four. Fourth walk given up by Kazmir, a little irritated with either Jerry Meals or himself. I don't know. I'm watching with you guys on pitch tracks here. The strike zone looks like it says the lasers say it caught it, but tough when you're throwing off speed pitch to the top of the strike zone. A lot of times you get more of your fastballs at top strike strike zone called for a strike. But off speed pitch comes from a higher place and looks like it's kind of looping in there. And the umpires sometimes will not give up on it, just not read it. Jerry Meals is the home plate umpire and the crew chief in his 20th big league season. And so now two on and two out. And now Casimir must maintain his cool against Starlin Marte. Nothing in one. And I've got a big piece of A.J. Ellis. The bat barely nicks the ball, and then it just misses the glove and right square in the mast. Got a nice finishing touch, caroming off his right hand. That is getting your bell rung. Two for the price of one. Well, AJ's going home tonight. Got to sleep in his own bed for a few nights. Lives outside Milwaukee. Starling Marte, one for two at an RBI and a run scored today. That was some potentially reckless business. It was interesting because Scott Van Slyke used the Ball off AJ's mask as an opportunity to go and grab the rosin bag like he was giving AJ time, but also then chatted with Scott Casimir to set that pickup off. Up. 0 and 1, 2 on, 2 out. Can you go around? No, this is first base umpire Sean Barber. Dodgers with four in the top of the fifth. Have their first lead of the day, five to four, and Casimir aims to keep it that way. The two out single from McCutcheon. The gung walk on a full count. And the one one to Marte. Two and one. On Saturday night, Joe Blanton came unhinged on a what he thought was a, a strike. Ron Culpa thought otherwise. Slicing foul and out of play. And then he would surrender a two run home run to Jordy Mercer. And no Gatorade tumbler was safe. 
Now it's imperative that Kazmir channel that anger. I loved it when Joe Blen took it out on the Gatorade jug. Just showing your teammates how much you care and how much passion you have for winning. Here's a 2 2. Trung on and missed strike three. Biggest strikeout of the game for Kazmir. His fourth of the day. Pirates leave two, fail to score. We go to the sixth. The Dodgers maintain a 5 4 lead. LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. The Penguins sliding in safely to third against the Pirates back at Three Rivers Stadium. And here's Jock Peterson going to pinch hit for Scott Casimir. His final pitch of the game turns out to be his biggest pitch of the game. Striking out Starling Marte with two on and two out. The Dodgers take a 5 4 lead into the sixth. Peterson with Hernandez and Turner to follow. And on the first pitch, it's grounded foul at the first baseline. Nothing in one. That shot of the Penguin, Ron Say, and sliding in there just made me think of when they. Played in the big leagues then, and then in my generation also, we thought the big league stadiums were just absolutely gorgeous places that you dreamed about playing. But then you look at this place, looking out over the river with the bridge, the palaces that they get to play in now have gone to another stratosphere. And what they have done, whether it's PNC or AT&T, they, they don't have too many seats. Here the capacity is about 42 and it's roughly the same in San Francisco. And so you get big crowds and yet still have that cozy atmosphere and the just the view from our perch high atop PNC Park is as beautiful as any. And in those days with whether it was Three Rivers or Veteran Stadium mm -hmm. Riverfront yep. they were all circular concrete cookie cutters but they were multi purpose stadiums which seemed to be a good idea at the time and they were gorgeous and you'd love to go to them but then when you think how they've opened up the baseball stadiums now and now they're baseball only mm -hmm. stadiums which is a which is a big deal one and two to Peterson with Adrian Gonzalez on deck That's Mercer from behind second base and Peterson's retired first out of the sixth. And that's the great thing about Dodger Stadium that was never fully enclosed and you always had that view from the second deck and then the decks above. 
And each, like you say, Charlie, now they're ballparks, so everybody has a unique style of what they do with the fences or what they do with where they put their restaurant and how much foul territory they want to do or what angle their seats they're going to give their fans. It's amazing the characteristics of all the different ballparks now. Well, the other thing also is with those cookie cutter circular stadiums, multi purpose, they were all artificial turf. Mm -hmm. And how many players who played on those 20 years later are limping, have artificial knees? Saw Manny Sanguin the other day, and he's got a cane. Well, how many of the turf stuff shortened their sure. career? Or at least what the years that they played, they had to play less games because of the wear and tear. Gonzalez with a one hopper to Josh Harris. <laughs> Two out and nobody on. And Justin Turner coming up. Turner a double, a sacrifice fly, an RBI, and a run scored. And the Dodgers with a 5 4 lead. Turner fouls it off. Lewis Coleman warming in the Dodger bullpen on a hot summer's day and there's a southern sidewinder. One ball one strike. Dodgers five runs and six hits the Pirates four runs and four base hits. So Casimir. A rugged first inning and terrific. The next four now it'll be up to the bullpen down the stretch two and one to Turner. The shift is on for Justin and into center field and there's McCutcheon. And there's a one two three inning. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Coleman coming in to face Harrison, Rodriguez, and Kratz. Bottom half of the sixth inning. And Lewis Coleman is on in relief. Casimir goes five, four runs, and four hits. He leaves on the winning side of the ledger as Coleman makes his 35th appearance of the year. Dodgers make a couple of defensive switches along with that pinch hitting in the top half. Adrian Gonzalez takes over at first base and Jock Peterson who pinch hits, stays in the game 
in center field. And Trace Thompson, who started in center, moves to left field. So the Dodgers now trying to protect this one run lead, bottom half of the sixth. Well, I know you want to protect your bullpen, and I know the guys have been used an awful lot, but when you've lost three games in a row on the road to start this road trip, you are going to pull out all the stops and use whoever you need to to win this game. Worry about Milwaukee tomorrow. Take care of the Pirates right now. Josh Harrison leading it off in the bottom of the sixth. Takes a strike, nothing in one. Dodgers want to put an end to this three game losing streak in a hurry. To third. And on the second up, Turner throws out Harrison. That'll bring up Sean Rodriguez. Rodriguez has walked and bounced out. Sean grew up in Miami. And he has played every position for the Pirates this year except center field and catch. One ball, no strikes. He's an outstanding defender. Everywhere they play him. Two and Oda Rodriguez with Kratz on deck. It's been a while since Kenley Jansen has had the opportunity for a save. Behind the plate and out of play. This is the first time I've ever seen Kenley Jansen throw a ball in the bottom of the sixth. Well, we'll find out after the game what the thinking was behind that. Mm -hmm. Well, you, and definitely with your closer and with Kenley, you don't want to overuse him as far as the number of times you warm him up. Buck Showalter, when I was his pitching coach, if we got a guy up for the third time, he was done for the day whether he pitched in the game or not. It's the wear and tear of warming up, and I'm sure Dave Roberts and Rick Honeycutt have a legitimate reason for getting him up and getting him going. Maybe Kenley has said, I'll, I'll pitch two innings for you tonight. That still would be a little short. We've got to get to the ninth. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. The only other reason I can think he's throwing is that maybe he had a little twinge when he played catch before the game or something, or maybe he wants to just break a sweat and he wants to give an answer back to the dugout about how far he can go and what he can do. In the right. We going back. He's going to have to play the ricochet to get past him. Rodriguez thinking for a moment about going to third, and then he realizes whose arm is out there in right field. It's a good piece of hitting. Yasiel has no chance at this little slider that Rodriguez just drives over his head, and this gets a hard carom. You've got a mixture of fencing and poles out there, and it hits something very firm, gets by Yasiel. The league has started to, of course, hold their runners up, but they also, the runners are starting to bluff Yasiel like they are going, so they are trying to get Yasiel to miss a cutoff man or overthrow something because he loves to throw. And right there, Yasiel saw the deke and kept the ball down and hit the cutoff man perfectly. So the tying run in scoring position with one out, and Eric Kratz is the batter. Takes a strike, it's nothing in one. Kratz singled home two in the fourth inning.
Two hits on the year and three runs batted in. No balls and two strikes. Well, Kenley got a got up there to throw a few pitches of the bullpen, sits down, and that's Pedro Baez taking over next to J.P. Howell. 0 oh, 2 to Kratz. Into short center. Kendrick taking charge. And here comes Matt Joyce. Joyce, left handed hitter. Dave Roberts comes out and signals for J.P. Howell. Joyce is merely the best pinch hitter in the major leagues this year. He is 10 for 27. We'll have that showdown. Howell and Joyce when we come back. Pitched on Saturday night and walked the batter in an inning. So here he is facing Matt Joyce. He's got four pinch hit home runs this year. He's knocked in 13 as a pinch hitter, hitting 370. So there has not been a better pinch hitter in the bigs this year than Matt Joyce facing J.P. Howell. This is probably the only guy that JP will face with Pedro Baez, the right hander in the bullpen, and Jordy Mercer, the leadoff hitter on deck. And two out, the tying run at second base. Bottom of the six, Dodgers nursing a precarious 5 4 lead. Outside and low, one ball and no strikes. Takes a special breed. Would be a great pinch hitter. You got one shot at it. You wait around all day for that moment. Danny Mota. Dave Hansen. Vic Davalio. And nerves of steel. One ball, one strike to Matt Joyce. It takes an awful lot of work for a very short amount of time that you get to execute all that practice. It takes a lot of discipline to train every day and work out every day and work towards being your best for that moment and then not getting a chance, but every three, four days. One ball and one strike. 
And like a starting pitcher, if you fail, you, you sit there and, and wear it for a while until you get to come back up to the plate and get another opportunity. And a lot of times it is big game changing situations that you're hitting in. So the feelings are deep when you fail and the feelings are awesome when you succeed. Two balls and a strike to Joyce Rodriguez leads from second. Inside and high and it's three and one. Lenny Harris. Yep. You're not usually hitting off a tired starter. It's a matchup situation. So you're getting the, the lefty specialist out of a bullpen. You're getting the right handed flamethrower. You're going up against some of the best. And in the most important part of the game more times than not. Three and one. Three and two. He's working him in two directions. J.P. Hall is the changeup right here, and it comes back towards him. You see A.J. reaching back toward the inner half of the plate. He's also been throwing him some big sliders slash slurves. So it's three balls and two strikes. Mercer with an 11 game hitting streak on deck. Rodriguez a tying run at second. Got him. And that will end the inning. J.P. Howell gets Matt Joyce tried to check his swing, but punched out by home plate umpire Cherry Meals. What around? That's that. We'll The SoCal Honda Dealers in game box score. RBIs on this Monday afternoon for Turner, two for Puig, and one apiece for Kendrick and Ellis as the uh, Dodgers into the seventh inning take a five to four lead against Juan Nicasio. They saw the Dodger of a year ago last night, and he was perfect. In the sixth inning, he'll be facing Trace Thompson, Yasio Puig, and Howie Kendrick. Nicasio began the year as a starter. That wasn't working out too well. So basically devoted to the bullpen and looking to find his way back. Thompson 0 for 2, a walk and a run scored. Hitless in his last 17 at bats. And a little number to second base. So Thompson's troubles continue. And Yasiel Pui with the Morongo slow mo cam. 
with a base hit in his last at bat. Puig is one for three, two RBIs and a run scored. And showing some life at the plate since coming off the disabled list. Missed 17 games. It's nice to see him go to the opposite field in the last at bat on a fastball down the middle. A lot of his hits so far since coming off the DL were going to left. Good solid line drives, but we know that doesn't last very long when the league sees that you're doing well pulling the ball. They start to change their pattern on you and they can find some holes. So staying on the ball and going to right is a very good sign for lengthening the success. Puig with his hit today is at 250. That's Josh Harrison with Freeze getting out of the way. Quickly two out, nobody on in the seventh. And Howie Kendrick coming up. Kendrick is one for three. After hitting a buck and a half in April, it's been a slow and steady climb. For Kendrick. He's a career 290 hitter. You know he's going to come around and he's in the process of doing just that. Kendrick with his hit today has hit safely in 11 of his last 13 games. This time he bounces easily to short. Mercer throws him out. And the Dodgers are retired in order. Seventh inning stretch on this Monday matinee from Pittsburgh. Dodgers 5 4. Dodgers trail 4 0 after the first inning. But they have climbed back in the saddle, take a 5 4 lead into the bottom of the seventh as Joe Blanton is about to make his 35th appearance of the year. Scott Casmir gave up four runs and three hits in the first inning. And then Coleman and Hell got through the sixth. The Dodgers came back with runs in the third and the fifth inning. Landon, who blew a gasket with a ball strike count or call the other night against home plate umpire Ron Culpa. His task now is to finish off the Pirates in the seventh. 
beginning with the red hot Jordy Mercer who takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Mercer has walked score to run bounced to third and fly to left. One ball one strike. David Freeze on deck. McCutcheon to follow. Two balls and a strike. Mercer at 275 takes low. Three and one. Dodgers this year when leading after seven are 28 and one. A lead off walk for Mercer here in the seventh inning. MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out of market game live at HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Oh, those leadoff walks late in games. David Freeze takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Freeze has been hitting the ball to right field during this series. Joe Blanton going to try and get him to roll over one. Get a double play. He doesn't run real well. Nothing in two. Freeze fly to left in the first. Is struck out and fly to right. Much better start to this count than it was with Jordy Mercer. Joe Blanton pouring the strikes in here. Gets him on three pitches. It was like Freeze didn't want to leave the party. Two fastballs and then a little change up. I don't know what they were going with there. Maybe a front door slider that he ended up still throwing away. Got him and it was effective. One out in the seventh. McCutcheon coming up. A single, a double, and a run scored today. And there's a breaking ball for a strike. Cutchin always seems to feast on Dodger pitching. McCutcheon with 163 career home runs ranks him seventh. On the Pirates all time list. Nothing has come easy since the Dodgers took the lead. Pirates left two on in the bottom of the fifth. In the bottom of the sixth, they left a man on. He was at second, and here they got the leadoff walk in the seventh. A lot of tension since taking the lead. To third, to second. Not in time at first. We'll get the routine delay maybe here to see if the Dodgers want to review this. Adrian Gonzalez playing first now. Didn't start the game. Giving him a little rest. Usually has a very good feel on whether to review it or not. They will play on. But now two out and McCutcheon takes over at first base for Mercer. Ellis goes out to talk to Blanton. As Jung Ho Gung is coming up. Sitting in the middle of the pirate order are two guys with double digit home runs and then it starts to kind of 
pare down as far as the power behind Gung. He's walked twice, scored a run today. And has been struck out. One ball and no strikes. Dodgers fly to Milwaukee right after the game. The Mariners have a much longer trip. They go to Seattle. As beautiful as Seattle is when players see there especially on the east coast part of the country. There's a trip to Seattle go get a new book. It's a long flight. One ball one strike. The Mariners average generally about 25 to 30,000 more air miles per year than any other team. Their closest trip is to Oakland and that's almost a two hour flight. That'll wear you out. Sure would. The ball is striking two out. McCutcheon with the lead off first. There he goes. Pitch is high. Throw to second base. Out at second base. A.J. Ellis with the fourth caught stealing of the season. Getting McCutcheon, who is slow to get up. A.J. with a pretty near perfect throw. And McCutcheon overslides the bag, and that was his undoing. Caught stealing this year. Adrian Gonzalez had a very good feel that something was up with McCutcheon over there at first. Came in before the pitch and chatted with Joe Blanton. Blanton, I'm sure, then unloaded the ball in a hurry. AJ Ellis still the ball a little late. McCutcheon got a good jump, but the overslide got him. Howie Kendrick doing an outstanding job staying with the tag. Chase Utley is now pinch hitting. Utley with a day off until now takes outside and low one ball and no strikes. So Blanton comes in he gets the job done in the seventh. And it's two balls and no strikes to chase Utley. With A.J. Ellis on deck. And Chris Taylor to follow. 
Dodgers five runs and six hits the Pirates four runs and five and there's a strike two and one in one run games this year the Dodgers are 12 and 14 the Pirates are 11 and 10 Pirates won last night four to three Utley fouls it back it's two and two. Just a beautiful lazy Monday afternoon game. In the latter stages of June. Had a fair amount of rain overnight. It stopped oh, about 9 30 10 o'clock this morning and. It's turned out to be a, a lovely humid. Monday in Pittsburgh. Three and two. You ready for some brats? Yeah, I'm ready for some brats. Are we staying at the Fister? Yes, sir. So we got to deal with the ghosts. You do. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Under the knees, ball four. So Utley a leadoff walk here in the eighth off Juan Nicasio. Ellis has a hit, a walk, and he's bounced out. The infield hit in the fifth inning, deep in the hole. Mercer couldn't make the play cleanly. Ellis would drive in a run. And to this point, the game leading run. Utley back standing up. Chase has one stolen base in three tries. Chris Taylor, the newest Dodger on deck, he's tripled and scored a run today. He's one for three. Utley being held on by David Freeze. No better feeling for a manager than to have some of his spare parts get a start and, and then to capture a W you rest your regulars it really gives the team a boost especially when you can break a three game losing streak that's the boost no balls and a strike especially coming off a Kershaw loss. Kershaw has won about 70% of his starts in his career following a Dodger loss. And so now it's the Dodgers turn to reciprocate. Into right field. Here's Rodriguez. The sun is shining. He's got his sunglasses on the brim of his cap. Looks good. Don't ask me why. Why? I have no idea. Now Chris Taylor. Almost nobody uses those old flip downs anymore. If the ball's in the sun, there is no sunglass that's going to help. Even the old dark, dark flip downs. Now Taylor in his first Dodger appearance takes it back in the nick of time. It's a good look. Not necessarily functional. Get you a sunglass deal. Ah. On the holidays, all your family can get free sunglasses. Form fitting sunglasses for Jung Ho Gung. No pitch. 
time was called. So that's Chris Taylor. He'll be 26 in August. 6'1", about 200 pounds. Acquired eight days ago from the Mariners for Zach Lee. He was six for 12 at Oklahoma City. And hit 312 at Triple A Tacoma in the Mariners system. Quick toss to first base. Utley back standing up. And there's Juan Nicasio. Made one start for the Dodgers last year, but used out of the bullpen primarily. Another toss and Utley's back. Pirates with four in the first, the Dodgers with one in the third and four in the fifth, lead it five to four with one out. Taylor fouls it off. Chris Taylor played collegiately at the University of Virginia, 2010, 11, and 12. In the minor leagues, a 316 average. In 86 major league games, a 240 average. A ball to strike in and out. Utley leading from first. It's one and two. A little bit of an inside out approach for Chris Taylor. And then he drove the ball to left center for the triple. That was a kind of an inside breaking ball that he got the head out on. These last few pitches looks like he's driving the ball through the hole there, vacated by the first baseman with Utley on first. And a big hole over there. Taylor was a fifth round pick of the Mariners in 2012, and now Eric Kratz and Juan Nicasio want to get on the same page. The Giants will be hosting the Athletics tonight at AT&T Park. The Giants have won 13 of their last 15. The one two inside and low two balls and two strikes. Casio on two and two. There goes the runner, and Taylor fouls it off. Chris Woodward tosses one into the stands. Chris Taylor needs a new piece of lumber. And he'll get one. Dodgers playing a little run and hit right there with a 2 2 count getting chase underway. Eric Kratz the catcher has a very good throwing arm. Two and two Utley extends the lead ever so slightly. There he goes. Ground ball. And a double play. In that case, the runner going. Well, Taylor hit right into the defense. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Bottom of the eighth, Dodgers 5-4.
is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Petey, Pedro Guerrero. We go to the bottom of the eighth. And it is Pedro Baez. Baez making his 35th appearance. 334 ERA. Opponents are hitting only 184, but it's those seven home runs that have cost him dearly. Casimir went five innings, and since then, Coleman two thirds of an inning. Hal two thirds of an inning. A full inning turned in by Blanton. Now it's Baez, and if he can get the job done, we'll see Kenley Jansen. It's been a while since. Kenley's had a save chance. Gung takes a strike, nothing in one. He's walked twice, scored a run, and has been struck out. He was caught at the altar when McCutcheon tried to steal second. He'd be thrown out in the seventh inning. Baez misses inside, one and one. Dave Roberts juggling his bullpen according to where they are in the Pittsburgh lineup. Remember Baez was up behind J.P. Howell and then all of a sudden Joe Blanton pitched last inning which was the top of the order to get through McCutcheon. And so now Baez getting the tail end of the order starting with the four hole. Blanton had kind of taken over that later role beyond Pedro but I think Dave Roberts liked the matchups better with Blanton going a little earlier today. Two and one. Marte is on deck. Now it's two and two. And after Marte, Josh Harrison. Marte having a career year. Third leading hitter in the National League today. Baez on two and two to Jung Ho Gung. Swung on and missed strike three. 97. Nasty. One out. Well, Pedro getting the leading lady right here, and it is 97 on the inner half, almost the corner. A little tailing action down and underneath the bat. Pedro got the ability to go up the ladder, also can pinpoint those lower corners. Starling Marte has a hit and a run scored and an RBI today. He's also been struck out twice. Nothing in one. So Baez becoming a notoriously slow worker out there. Here's the 0-1. Foul back, nothing in two. I love the boring action on his fastballs in to these righties. When he punched Gung out on the first pitch to Marte, that second one he's trying to go up the ladder with a little something straighter. He comes inside with that tailing fastball at 97 or above. That's going to be hard to hit. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and missed strike three at 98 upstairs. Just loosen it up, Charlie. 96, 97, 98. If it's near the corner, it's going to be really hard. That's at the top of the strike zone. I like the fact that he didn't go inside with that too much. Give him something to swing at. Not going to catch up to it there. Well, Josh Harrison coming up. Dave Roberts coming out. And he's going to bring uh, Kenley Jansen in for a four out save. So Baez faces two batters, strikes out two, and now it's going to be Kenley to get the final four outs. Dodgers 5 4.
Kenley Jansen who has not pitched since last Tuesday when he knocks the save Dodgers would beat the Nationals three to two back at Dodger Stadium certainly rested enough for a four out save he comes in with two out nobody on in the eighth and Josh Harrison will face Jansen who is in search of his 22nd save of the year. 35 strikeouts, four walks. Get right into it right here. Don't worry about the ninth. Josh Harrison is 0 for 3. Dodgers trail 4 0 after one, lead it 5 to 4, two out, nobody on in the bottom of the eighth. Harrison late to the dance and it's nothing in one. Sean Rodriguez on deck and Eric Kratz to follow. Nothing in two. The Dodger collective bullpen ERA 3.08. Lowest in the National League, and opponents are hitting just 201 against them. Coleman, Howell, Blanton, Baez, and now Jansen. One ball, two strikes. Kenley started him out with two cutters at around 92 miles an hour. That last one's a four seamer at 94. That's the actual velocity, but the relative velocity from this big man that gets down the hill, it's probably another three mile an hour faster relative. Foul back and out of play. Little slide piece that he hung right there. Well, that left leg extends out so far so that by the time that Jansen releases the ball, he's closer to the plate than most pitchers are. For every foot, it's three mile an hour differential as far as reaction time. Well, Baez strikes out two, and Jansen strikes out Harrison. A perfect eighth. We go to the ninth. Dodgers five to four. Coming up after the game, it's Access Sportsnet Dodgers brought to you by Nissan. My guest is John Hartung and Ned Coletti are wondering where the heck Jerry Hairston Jr. is as we should be on the air with us in just a bit. I'll be in the clubhouse with you talking to Dave Roberts about this hopeful come from behind win. We'll talk to Scott Casimir about what happened in the first inning and how he was able to settle down. And we'll talk to the Dodgers offense about putting up five runs. Hopefully, guys, they can get this win and we can get out of here. And those five runs will be enough. Juan Nicasio pitching his third inning of relief as we go to the ninth. And Jock Peterson will be leading it off. 
an ominous beginning to this Monday afternoon game in Pittsburgh when the Pirates scored four in the first off Casimir. But then he would settle down. And the Pirates have been without a run since. It, Coleman and Howell and Blanton and Baez and Jansen have shut down the, the Pirates on one base hit. Dodgers came back with a run in the third and four in the fifth. Peterson's second at bat of the day, and it's two balls, no strikes. Well, if they can hang on to this lead, this is a big win for the Dodgers on many levels. Start to feel good about themselves again. At 28 and 1 when they lead after the eighth inning. Two and one to Peterson. Three and one. And they'll put an end to a, an eight game losing streak at PNC Park. The three one. Peterson, a leadoff walk in the ninth. Well, Dodger is looking for some insurance runs, make it a little easier for Kenley Jansen in the ninth. Second walk given up by Nicasio. And here's Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez did not start today. Came on in the sixth and bounced to second. They've got the shift on for Adrian who punctures it. So the Dodgers now first and second and Gonzalez hitting under 200 this month. Feels good about himself on that base hit. Watch this ball find a hole on the shift. Three guys on that side of the infield but Adrian hits it hard enough and in the right place. That's got to feel good for the big guy. Pirate bullpen is quiet. They've been taxed as much as the Dodger bullpen. And they head out on a nine game, 10 day road trip right after this. Beginning in Seattle. Justin Turner, first and second, nobody out. No balls and a strike. We have a look at uh, Turner. Tweak something in his back leg. Fouled a ball off his front foot and toe earlier, but see how that back leg kind of wrenches right there? Does his, does his knee take a twisting? Maybe something cramped up on him with all the heat you're playing in today. He's limping it off as best as he can. And Turner's been so hot. He scored a run, double home a run. One for three. And the Dodgers looking for some insurance here in the ninth. One ball, one strike. The way he's stretching, it looks like he's got a cramp. And even after that check swing, just loading that leg back up, putting stress on whatever muscle he's dealing with. Looked like it wanted to spasm again on him.
Two and one. That's the original awkward swing that brought Dave Roberts out of the dugout. Turner has raised his average 30 points in the last three weeks or so. And a strike. Two and two. He bottomed out at 221. And with his base hit today, he's at 251. Count is two and two. Peterson is at second base. Gonzalez is at first. Ninth inning. You'll get another shot at it. Trace Thompson on deck. Yasiel Puig to follow. And looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, the bottom third of the Pirate Order coming up against Kenley Jansen. Turner 11 home runs and 38 runs batted in. Last 34 games, 10 home runs. On two and two from Juan Nicasio. Three and two. In Turner's first 39 games this year, he hit one home run. In his last 34, he's hit 10. Three and two does Roberts have the runners running with a one run lead in the ninth and nobody out. They're not going and Turner with a routine fly ball to right. That's the first out of the ninth. Dave Roberts taking a walk down the Dodger bench to check on Justin Turner. You just want him to finish the at bat and not going to play defense in the ninth. Now Trace Thompson. 0 for 3 a walk and a run scored. And Trace is looking for his first hit in his last 18 at bats. Has seen his average plummet about 40 points. 11 home runs, 27 runs batted in for Thompson. Boy, would he like a base hit here. Inside and low one ball no strikes to Trace Thompson. Yeah, he really needs to hit for his confidence. It's it's one thing when a veteran goes in a slump and they've got the equity of a half their career behind them that they can revert revert back to that kind of thinking that I know I'll get out of this but young players don't have that two balls no strikes they start questioning themselves and. The Dodgers have not been swept in a four game series by the Pirates since 1944. 72 years. So winning today will put that ominous streak to an end. Two balls and a strike. It's still World War II. FDR. Dodger win today. I'll put an end to their three game losing streak. 
The 2 1 from Nicasio. Drilled right into Jordy Mercer's hand or glove. Ball is thrown away, but not far enough for Peterson to advance. This is just absolutely scorched right there. Should have led to possible insurance run and Jock gets back in time. Nice job freezing on the line drive and getting back. Keeping the opportunity to score this run for Howie Kendrick. So now two out and two on. It might have been an out but. Thompson goes back to the dugout knowing that he couldn't hit that ball any harder. Puig one for four to run scored and two RBIs today. No balls and a strike. That's first base umpire Sean Barber. He's a vacation reliever. Weig with six home runs and 23 runs batted in. Peterson at second. Gonzalez at first. Weig gets hit. And that will load the bases. This one gets not a lot of them, but it gets a very painful area there on the end of your elbow. And it could be dangerous right on the bone. Now Ray Searage is going to go out and chat with Nicasio. Why do they call it the funny bone if it hurts so much? <laughs> that pain and that numbness is just not feel good at all. On that body, that's about the only part that could hurt. Look at those arms. <laughs> so now with two out, bases loaded. Howie Kendrick with the base hit here can give Jansen and the Dodgers a lot of. Room to exhale. I got to believe how he's going to hit it hard somewhere. He's been squaring up a lot of balls. He feels really good about his swing right now. There's no place to put him, so he's going to see some strikes. With Peterson, Gonzalez, and Puig aboard. Ball, no strikes. Searage went out to tell Nicasio, look, there's nobody in the bullpen. You're going to finish it up. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Two balls, no strikes. And you know one thing for sure. Unless maybe how he goes deep, Kenley Jansen could get in at bat. There he is in the on deck circle. He's swinging left handed. You say, wait a second, he throws right in. He's a natural southpaw. Ex catcher. Mm -hmm. Kenley's a career one for three hitter, too. Lifetime 333 is Kenley Jansen. Yeah. He's gonna he's protecting Howie. He brushes his teeth with the left hand. He, he writes with his left hand. <laughs> he throws with the right. Here's a 2 1. Swing and a miss. Two balls and two strikes. First came across Kenley Jansen when he was the catcher for the Netherlands team in the World Baseball Classic in 2009. 
from Curacao. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. And at second base, Harrison picks it up, throws to first, and the inning is over. So the Dodgers at first and second, nobody out, could not cash in. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Jansen and the Dodgers leading it five to four. Ninth inning and Kenley Jansen in search of his 22nd save faced Andrew McCutcheon. I'm sorry, faced uh, Josh Harrison in the eighth inning. That's Chris Taylor who began the game at shortstop, moving over to third. Corey Seeger is at short. Turner in his last at bat. It was an awkward step. Finished the at bat. He's come out of the game. That's as much as we know, and we'll certainly know more when the game ends. John Rodriguez, first pitch. Pops it up behind the plate. Ellis giving way to Chris Taylor. Ellis seemed to be having some trouble with it, and Taylor came all the way down to make the play for the first out of the ninth. Nice anticipation hustle by Chris Taylor not just assuming that A.J. Ellis is going to get this ball A.J. when he first got out of his haunches was having trouble locating the ball but Chris never counted on that he busted it as you see in the corner of your screen there the whole way I'm not sure A.J. would have made it over to where he was going to be balanced and in position as Chris Taylor to capture this. There has not been an easy fly ball or pop up here today with the sky and the wind and everything they've been dealing with. Now Gregory Polanco. He is pinch hitting for Eric Kratz. And Polanco having a great year. One out ninth inning. Dodgers five Pirates four. And Polanco takes a ball low one ball no strikes. Polanco at 297 10 home runs 44 runs batted in. He's also walked 36 times he's got an on base percentage of 377 he's had some leg issues the past few days. I'm guessing his thumbs are ringing. One and one. John Jaso will pinch hit. He's on deck. There he is. One ball, two strikes to Gregory Polanco. In his last 16, I'm sorry, last six games. He's eight for 19. 421. A 
ball two strikes one out bottom of the ninth Dodgers five four. It happened again. He's not going to have any thumbs left after this at bat. Kenley has taken that cutter right in oh. on his fist. He's, he's having trouble getting his hands inside it and then he's also having trouble. Keeping it fair. He's pepper in the. Left side of the stands. So again one and two with one out in the ninth. Dodgers in search of their 42nd win. And Polanco will not go quietly. He tried a little different approach right there. He tried to stay back and throw the head of the bat at it, not get jammed. Instead of trying to inside out it, force it to left field, he decided to try and turn on it. So he flipped the hands and roll them over. A different approach to the cutter right there. He's going to take that approach. Kenley go up a little higher and get it by him. One and two to Polanco from Kenley Jansen. And now two out in the ninth. And that's a fourth strikeout for Jansen in the five batters he's faced. Watch where AJ Ellis catches this ball off this foul tip where it goes. That hurt. All the pressure goes right into the palm of your hand and your wrist. Henley Jansen takes the K. AJ Ellis, nice job hanging on to that foul tip. And now here is John Jaso. He is what separates the Dodgers in the end of their three game losing streak. One ball, no strikes. Jaso at 276. It's a short flight to Milwaukee, and Dodgers would like a walk away with a win here. One ball, no strikes. 2 0. The Dodgers have lost eight straight here at PNC, nine of their last ten. Overall, the Pirates have beaten the Dodgers ten of their last eleven and fourteen of their last seventeen. So the Dodgers want to turn that thing around with two out in the bottom of the ninth. Three balls, no strikes. Kenley pitching to avoid the big fly right here just doing a good job trying to keep Jaso from being able to hit the fly ball to right field. Jordy Mercer is on deck. Mercer 0 for 2 two walks. And an 11 game hitting streak in jeopardy. 3 and 0 to Jaso. Taking a strike 3 and 1. Three balls a strike and two out. Jansen deals. Jaso takes a walk. Now AJ Ellis goes out to talk to Jansen. Adrian Gonzalez has something to say as well. Chaso had no stolen bases in two attempts. They put Frazier over there, the youngster, and of course he has no stolen bases and no caught stealings. Has not even attempted. Just got here to the big leagues. Made his debut on Friday night. He's a very fast runner. Thus he is pinch running. Mercer is the potential winning run. Fouls it back. It's nothing in one. I wouldn't be surprised if they start Frazier. 
as effective as Kenley Jansen is uh, eliminating hits. Taking the risk of getting a stolen base is not a big one for the Pirates. Dodgers thinking the same thing. Well, if he gets caught, the game's over. We have enough riverboats on the Allegheny. Is Clint Hurdle a riverboat gambler? Oh, and one, not going. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. But now the Dodgers are a strike away. Kenley Jansen one strike away from his 22nd save of the year. Owen two to Mercer and a quick toss to first base and Frazier's back. Another toss. Dodgers no doubles defense. The outfield is way deep. On 0 and 2 to Jordy Mercer. Another toss to first base. They're going to keep him close. They know with two strikes that they might as well try. No balls, two strikes, two out. There he goes. Here's the pitch. It's high. And a stolen base in the winning the tying run. The tying run at second base. He gets a really good jump, and as fast as he is, AJ just eats it because he knows he has no chance. By the time Ellis is. Ready to throw. Frazier was about three quarters of the way to the bag. One ball, two strikes, two out. Mercer 0 for 2 has an 11 game hitting streak. The 1 2 is on the way. Foul back and out of play. The thing about the stolen base, of course, the tying runs in scoring position, but also changes the depth of the Dodger outfield. They were out back about five feet from the warning track, each one of them, but now they have to come in and guard against the single and maybe throw the ball and the runner towards home, try and get him out. But when you come in a little bit more shallow, now you got a chance to give up some doubles where the winning run could actually get the second base. Again, one of the things we've discovered about Frazier is a very fast runner, so he'll be off and running with the crack of the bat. One ball, two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers nursing a five to four lead. And we'll do it again. Next pitch will be Jansen's 23rd. He hasn't pitched since last Tuesday. Five out of the bullpen have worked today. Again, the one two, Jansen to Mercer. To right. Wig is there, and that's going to do it. Dodgers hang on to beat the Pirates five to four five runs seven hits no errors the Pirates four runs five hits and one error and it's time for a look at the Lexus plays of the game and they all came in the fifth inning when the Dodgers came from behind and scored four Yasiel Puig with a single to right he would knock in two Howie Kendrick with a single to right and he would knock in one. And then A.J. Ellis with a base hit into the hole at short would knock in what turned out to be the game winning run.
five, seven and oh, the Dodgers left nine, four runs, five hits, one error, the Pirates left six. That's a wrap from Pittsburgh for Oral Hershiser, Alana Rizzo. I'm Charlie Steiner saying good night.